theatre, film, TV and more. Susie Rung reviews it all on Joy Drive. Good afternoon, Susie Rung. Warren, have you been to Hong Kong? Yes, I have been to Hong Kong. It was one of the... In fact, I think it was the... Uh, one of the first places I went to overseas as a, um, you know, youngster. Right, so that would be before the 1997 handover. Yes, I think the first time I was there was probably 1991, Ah. around about then. Why do you ask? (laughs) Well, I I think think people consider that the golden age of Hong Kong, that, you know, uh, generally the idea Mm. is that after the handover, it's kind of become a little bit of a different place. Um, and you know, I I loved Hong Kong as mm. a teenager. I would go there every school holidays from Singapore. My parents got sick of it, and I was just, I remember I was just fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and I would take a flight on my own to oh. go to Hong Kong. <laughs> I was just so so enamored with it. So um, it's good to revisit Hong Kong in this week's program. Oh, definitely, uh, I loved Hong Kong, and uh, I, I you know what I, Hong Kong the thing that happened in Hong Kong was my first holiday romance happened what, in Hong what Kong. What is a holiday romance? <laughs> His name was Timothy and uh, I think I was I was probably, you know, I would have been 20 or something, if not 19 or something at the time and I went there and uh, like we fell in love with each other. It was amazing and there was no internet, Susie. There was no email or uh, mobile phones or anything like that and so we were writing letters to each other. And sending hang on, to each it was other. 1991 and you went to a gay bar in Hong Kong? No, I, yeah, yes, I did. That's right, I did. I, I went to a gay bar because I went with some, uh, yeah, a bunch of engineering students. We all went there and, uh, you know, a couple of them were gay. So we went to a gay bar, but we had to go like through a, like, I remember going up a high rise, like, but it was an old high rise, like it had stairs and a funny lift and then going through a couple of little tiny doors. So it wasn't an open club. It was a little sort of secretive place. And we went there and I met Timothy. Oh, such a wonderful story. Oh, I was so in love. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know what, I, try, I Googled him. I won't say his full name, but I Googled him um, uh, a few months ago, actually. I thought, what? happened to him and of course thousands of them came up so I don't know I have no idea I have no idea what happened to him but I was um like it went on for months and months but um and you know we never met up again and it fizzled out but oh it was the best holiday I'm glad this week's show has brought you these sweet memories (laughs) Yeah, it definitely has. Um, it was fun. But the show we're talking about is uh, Boy Scation. Oh, the other thing I did, Susie, on this first trip to, to Hong Kong was bought heaps of stuff. Shopping must have been really good back then. Shopping was really great in Hong Kong. In oh. comparison with Australia and Singapore, it was just leaps and bounds ahead of us. It was, it was an amazing place. It was the most vibrant place. I'm sure it's still very vibrant. Um, and, and it was like, I think, I think they had a lot of freedom with kind of trade and people were able to set up businesses quite easily. And it was just, opportunities everywhere you went. I remember seeing, you know, I mean, obviously a lot of very glamorous, luxurious shops, but also mm. just people having a table on the roadside and selling oh, yes. things. I thought that was oh, really exciting. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, the dim sum was amazing. And uh, Oh, the food there is incredible. Oh, it's interesting because a, a good friend of mine is from Hong Kong now, and I hear about, the, you know, how, how much it's changed since uh, the early 90s. Yeah, and I was hoping to see how much it's changed on this show, but... Obviously, they go on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about Boy Scation. It's on YouTube. If you've seen it, text us 0427 569 Luke from Yarraville says, so good to have Susie back on air. I missed you. There you go, Susie. Thank you. I love your look. <laughs> Tell us about the show, Susie. What do you think of it? Twelve gay men star in Boy Scation 2, a Hong Kong dating series with new episodes now dropping daily on YouTube. After the success of its predecessor, Boy Scation returns for its second season, extending its legacy as the first of its kind in the Chinese language. Fortunately for international viewers, subtitles are available in English. This year, participants take a trip to Bali, where they are put through a range of activities to test their compatibility and hopefully to inspire attraction with one another. Yes, Boy Scation is probably best suited for when you're looking for something silly after a hard day at work. It numbs your mind more than it stimulates it, but that's probably why dating shows are so hugely popular right now. It's not unusual to discover that the cast of Boy Scation is attractive. There is an 
an ounce of excess fat between the entire group, but I am pleasantly surprised that it is a funny collection of gays that we find, many of whom are witty and entertaining. It often looks like they are more interested in using the show to establish a screen career than they are trying to find a boyfriend, but honestly, I'm just glad that the show is a fun watch. We had discussed、uh, a Japanese equivalent, if you remember, the boyfriend on Netflix some weeks ago, and it seems Asian dating shows are indeed much more wholesome than their Western counterparts. Again, there is nothing overtly sexual in all that they present, but Boys Gation does have a fair amount of mischievous innuendos and cheeky insinuations that are definitely more hilarious than titillating. I don't seem to be invested in any of the budding relationships so far, but I do like the cast a lot. Aged between 20 and 44, I find them very amusing and would gladly give 23 minutes of my time each day, especially since there is no fighting and no angst at all. Just good time. I'm gays on vacation, flirting all day long to get famous on YouTube. Warren, these Hong Kongers are a、mm. lot more effervescent than the Japanese men on Netflix, huh? Oh, there's definitely, there's definitely、um, a, a difference, isn't there? There's definitely a difference in them. But Susie, I've got to say one thing that I was really impressed with with Boy Scation is the broad range of ages. I think it was great. Not everyone was sort of the same age. It was really good. And people talking to each other and being forced to talk to each other from different ages. I thought that was a real plus. I don't know. Would that happen on a dating show here? I've never watched a dating show here. I'm not interested. Would it happen? I have no idea <laughs> about dating shows. <laughs> That's why we don't review Married at First Sight, isn't it? <laughs> No, I'm kind of like my prince. I have like principles、yeah. <laughs> around that sort of stuff.、Um, I, I think, I think, you know, I understand how those shows can be very, very entertaining and addictive,、mm. but I just feel like there is a really bad sort of gender issue with those shows, which, of course, you know, when a show is all, just all men, I feel a little bit more comfortable that there, there isn't that,、um, that、uh, inequality there.、Um, so I, I find it easier to watch, like, it doesn't offend me. Well, in this case, it doesn't offend me at all. I, I found it really charming. Yeah, the,、um, I, I mean, the only thing is, and I think you、uh, said it correctly, is it is like it's a fun show. You just watch it, it's giggly, it's not offensive at all.、Um, the emojis pop up. <laughs> I, that took a bit of sort of getting used to it. They sort of go pop, pop, pop with a bit of、um, a sound effect. Yeah, I, I guess that's the way that the television is produced over there.、Oh, look, I liked it, but it didn't. Go, I would have liked it to have gone a little bit deeper, but it didn't do that. It sort of just skimmed the surface, and you're right. They, you could tell that they all wanted their own career, and that's fair enough as well. And it's probably a good platform to launch your own online career, but it didn't go deep enough for me. That was the only thing. I think there were a couple of lines said. One, one of the guys, or one of the contestants said,、uh, you know,、uh, um, I don't look like the type of guy that gay guys go for, you know, good looking and muscular. And I thought, oh, yeah, I suppose that's something we all experience, isn't it? And, but that's kind of as deep as it went. Yeah, you know, I understand what you're saying, but also, you also, like, when, it, when shows like this go a little bit deep, It becomes really questionable.、Yeah. Like, it's very hard to make these things look authentic when they've got, you know, they've only known each other for three days. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you expect serious things to happen. So, in a way, I do like that they keep it really light and frothy.、Yeah. And, 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 and they've chosen、uh, talent that are sort of quick enough. And, and my experience is that a lot of Hong, Kong, Hong Kongers are just really witty. So, they're, they're, yeah, you know, they're good. Yeah, they're, so they're good with the dialogue, and that, that makes the show rather than what we're used to hear about, you know, lots of betrayal, lots of cheating and lying and all, all that. It's a different way of doing an, a dating show, which I find、uh, I, I, I like it much more. Susie, I wonder if,、um, you know, we're talking about these guys all get put together on a cruise. I mean,、uh, that's kind of the, the worst environment if you're suffering from social anxiety or something like that. You're forced to get the, to know them. I couldn't help but think about the work function. It was a bit like a work function. You know, they were talking, and,、uh, but it was just staying at that particular level. But、uh, I wonder if there is a difference between, say, going to a gay club in Hong Kong. Are people friendlier than, say, going to a gay club in Sydney? Is there less attitude? Is there, I don't know, what's it like? Have you been? No, I haven't. And I'm thinking about clubs. In Singapore, obviously, I have not been a lot. Oh, actually, my last trip. Oh, great. This is a great story. Oh, in, awesome. <laughs> last trip I, I went in, in June. So, you know, just、uh, four months ago, they opened in Singapore their the first ever drag bar. Oh. So, 
Yeah, so it's a drag bar. You you have drag queens there all the time when it's open. It's, I think it's open like four day, four nights a week, and there's there shows through that those four nights and really good quality shows. So it was great, and um, I, I thought, all right, I can go to drag bar uh, and actually have something to focus on. You know, you you can stand mm. there and watch the show rather than have a drink, and I don't drink, which makes it even harder, harder, and and then try to socialize. So, but it was a great time. Uh, people. In some ways, things don't really change. You, you know, the, the place is kind of overrun with quite young gays. You know, they, they look like uh, the late 20s mostly. Uh, and, you know, they would were, they were drink too much, which is the whole point of it, really. Mm. Um, but um, there is also... And, and you, you see the same sort of types don't you like ah. the, the, yeah um, the, the, the ones that look uh, really polished and rich and uh, who dress in really expensive clothing the, that's a very uh, again, I think East Asian thing and then you have the muscle boys and then you know the, the, the equivalent seem, seem to have persisted through the decades um, but I do think, it, and but with the with the drag element, it does feel like there is more of um, an awareness of of inclusivity, which uh, which made it more comfortable for me. Because like it's hard for me to just walk into any bar, uh, even if it's a gay bar, and, and feel like uh, I'm I'm not too much of it, not too much of an outsider. But because there were there were uh, there was a focus on drag, I did feel a lot more comfortable. I had a great time. Susie, I reckon you could walk into. Uh any gay bar here, and you'd be uh, you'd be mobbed. You're so popular. Oh no, I get evil eyes all really? the time. No. You know that that yeah, there there are a lot of there are a lot of gay men who are very weird about trans people. Oh. I mean, <laughs> is it just gay men or are we all sort of, you know, we're all insular in our little, uh, I suppose, our, our letters of the acronym and we don't like to mix and, and be curious. I don't know. I, I, wonder, I wonder if some gay bars are just not very nice to women in general or, or mm. trans women in particular. I have no idea of knowing that. But, but that's one of the things that I experienced when I first transitioned. Like I would go to the gay bars that I was familiar with and I just found a bit of hostility, not crazy amounts of mm. but you know but you know when you're on a night out even just one or two moments of hostility is enough to kind of dampen everything and i'm sad to say it still happens a bit and it can be hard i mean it can be hard for for gay men to go into gay places as well because i suppose you know we've, there's a, there's a lot of clickiness and and some people find it difficult to necessarily say hello to people and people other people think oh i don't want to have sex with that guy so i won't talk to him but you know there's all this stuff going around and we've got all our history and everything that our stories they all come together in this one place and so it's hard enough as it is being a gay man so i can't imagine it would be a lot worse i can imagine well, it would so be a lot worse, I should take. because it's so hard i think that if there's an opportunity that comes up for you you should join one of these dating shows oh i would love to i would have joined this one <laughs> <laughs> Please explain they why have, this one in particular. They would have thrown me out. There are a couple of really nice guys on there, I thought. There was one from Australia as well. Yeah, I actually kind of know Anthony. Oh, he's, do you? He's from Sydney, yeah. Uh, we met on a, working on a, some kind of like fashion project like 10 years ago or something. And back then, you know, I would add people quite randomly. And he's been on my Facebook for 10 years. And that's how I knew about this show. He's been talking about being on this show. Susie, I'll have to uh, get back on Facebook, I think, straight after the show. <laughs> I was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking, how do I hook you up with Anthony? Yeah. <laughs> but you're not on social media. That's a problem. On the radio, you can listen in and come in. Susie, it's I'll always... Send, I'll send him my chat. <laughs> <laughs> Always good to chat with you. What are we watching next week? English Teacher is on Disney Plus, a new American sitcom about a high school teacher who happens to be gay. It promises to be a funny watch, so I look forward to talking about English Teacher on Disney Plus when I see you next Tuesday. Bye bye. Thank you, Susie. We'll catch Susie wrong next Tuesday, straight after five o'clock. We're watching English Teacher today. It was Boy Scation, which is on YouTube. I